Now, um, just got to check because we're on a development here whether the yeah asymptote has been updated. Biber has got the same version. DVI SVGM has been updated, and Zindi is the same. So, I guess the next question is: Do we use the updated versions? in the current development or do we stick with the older versions um, I think I'll be tempted to go with the older versions and would have to modify the dates in these commands to use the 2020 so to make sure don't use the 2029 uh, sorry 2019 one um, what we'll do is to rename the 2019 so it's invalid if anything points at it do not use so it's still there if we do need to use it I don't think we will do in fact, it's taking up quite a bit of disk space. Um, but it's been renamed, so if anything points to it, then it will cause an error. So that means that when we come to run these configure commands with the 2019 in, if we miss one out or miss something out that points to that directory, then it means hopefully it's likely to fail because it can't find the directory. It won't exist. <coughs> So with that, I'm going to now remove the text live directory. And yeah, I think what I'm going to do next is to install these other get rid of this SVN in case I start using that, I don't want to be doing that. I'm going to install these other text live based documents or they're under the type setting part because I'm still not sure whether they are part of text live or not, if they just use it or they just happen to be in this type setting chapter. Um, especially as on the text live it did say to you, know, you can now proceed with these if you need them. So it kind of points to the fact that these packages do rely on text live. So it means I have to put FOP on hold for the moment and the rebuilds for um, graphics um, while I get this done. So anyway, this first one does require text live. You can see we've got ghost scripts installed, free glut is complete I believe let's check that yeah we haven't got any dependence on that GC I think has been done as well so we need glue GLM LibTIPC I think we've got that one yeah, we've done that one. And we've got that one to rebuild anyway after Kerberos, so we don't need to do that one at the moment. Yeah, that's got a uh, dependency on Kerberos. Let's see what Kerberos has got. That's got a few. Um, let's check the rest of these. GSL. Oh, we haven't got that one. And 
and lipstick segway. No, I haven't got that one either. And it looks like the website's gone again. I'll just wait for the Linux from scratch website to come back. I don't know what this problem is. Um, right, and have not loaded. Let's have a look at Kerberos on the local copy of the book. I think this might be a bit of a biggie. Qtils open LDAP. Qtils open LDAP. Obviously bind. Now right, has a separate dependency there. So all of these are optional as well. I think we can probably install Kerberos as it is. Um, without these dependencies, but it does say it needs NTP so that it can authenticate correctly. I have socket and lib event. Some Perl modules. Test needs. Okay. Let's look at this again. So glue GLM to RPC GSL and lib six GSL lib six what needed Kerberos that was oh it's optional anyway so we could no let's stick it in and then we'll put a rebuild for Kerberos because that's got a few dependencies on it <coughs> GLM hasn't got any glue requires Mesa Okay, so um, let's build these packages here. Let's download this one. Extract it. And this is a straightforward configure, make, check and install. Let's test it. It's passed and Make it install. And that's done. Oops, sick. Okay, that 
that's general libraries. <clears throat> GSL Again, it's just a matter of following commands that are in the book we haven't got Sphinx installed, so we won't be building the HTML documentation. And let's run the tests. Okay, so those tests have passed and we can do make install didn't build documentation so that's that package completed so that's GSL Now I've got lib event. So again, this is more or less just copy and paste the commands. We can do the additional one to run Doxygen to create the API documentation. And let's now run the tests.
Okay, so the tests have finished. Let's now install it. And we've built the API documentation so we can install that too. And that's done. So that's chapter 17, the event. Now we've got some Perl modules, let's just have a look at these. Oh yes, this was for NTP Okay So finally I've got my Perl module so I can make a note of these Might have enough room on the page, there's quite a few on this, this one page But let's see how we go these are all quite small packages, they don't take long to build. In fact, as I remember, some of the modules take longer to test than they do to build. So generally these are fairly straightforward. So that's that. Test needs. Next, what we've got is URI. And notice with all these modules, they begin with a capital letter. It's done. SSVA So it says here, no, if enabling this external test, one test in external 15 alt names T may fail. This module uses variant of the standard build and store instructions. So I'll just put these in. test successful so let's install it and that package is done so it's net s s l e a y and the last Perl module we've got is IO socket
Looks like a similar variant to before. As a pass so we can now install and that's complete. So now I come to install NTP which allows synchronizing the time on computers. It says to create a user and a group for the time. Set in the time, so let's do that. Create that user and group. So I've just got a set script to run. And then let's just check these commands. There's no other extra options there, so we can just build let's build this if it produces any summary at the end. we can build. And make check. So that's all okay, we can install it now. That's complete, so we can now go to configure. <coughs> um, consonants. Okay, so um, copy this in, but let's it set because um, might not want all these servers. And it's a good idea to have a backup server, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of the ones outside of Europe because while I'm in Europe, I don't need them. I'm going to add my own local one as I've already got an NTP server running. So I'll just add in server and the IP address of the server. And that should be enough. Uh, 
and it also says about adding a security session. Um, so it sounds like it could be quite good. Let's add that in. And let's save that. So the two options to synchronize the time. One is to run NTPD continuously, allow it to synchronize the time in a gradual manner. The other option is to run NTP periodically and update the time each time NTP is scheduled. If you choose option one, then install NTP scripts, including boot, boot scripts. So basically, I'd say that if it's a machine that's turned on and off every day, use the boot scripts because that's when it will run. If it's a machine that's um, left on for days on end or weeks or months even, then you want it to synchronize while it's on because obviously the boot scripts won't work. So you probably want to do what it says here and add NTBDQ to a cron script. Um, and in fact here, there's extra commands here to, to set the time at reboot and shutdown. So, let's, um, let's get the following command if you like to set the hard clock at current. The other way around is already set up by LFS, I'm not sure what that means. But let's install the boot script. And we can start it as well. So let's just see what the time is now. In fact, I'll do this. see no it's really accurate so there's no change there and um, we can actually do ntbd minus q to force it step file leap second file all oh, right it's because there's already a process running because we've started the Demon. Um, let's have a look at these set clocks. I think it's saying that these are already configured. Maybe they're not. Um, I see. So I think these two here are for the second option. So that you have, we've set the one where it's maintaining the time all the time. This will set cron so that it updates the time at regular intervals, say every day or every week or whatever. And then these additional script files will run to update the time at start up and shut down when the machine does get updated and shut down. So we, we don't want these because we've got this boot script running anyway to manage the daemon. So you either want that one line there or these two. And I'd say the one line would be, I think, ideal if you've got a machine that um, may, may, well, I don't really know, actually. I mean, it could be a machine that's running continually that might be a better way to have it, actually, to just run as a daemon. And maybe just have these running um, maybe every hour or 
just the updates when when it shuts down and boots possibly it's, it's really down to you how you how you envisage the importance of having accurate time so that should be that package at least it's set up now for uh, Kerberos so let's come out of this and remove the package and update our completion list chapter 15 NTP so now I can install MIT Kerberos what I'm going to do is to add this to the rebuild list so that we can rebuild it at some other point with all the options so rebuild MIT Kerberos after optional packages so let's fetch it extra options here so let's examine them local state uh, with system ET SS photo equals no neural DNS for realm with LDAP so we haven't got LDAP so I think we just take the default options let's see if this produces any output at the end any summary so we'll just build it now and we'll run make minus k check which has got to be run as the root user so let's become the root um, let's just check the paths that's because I went to SEO um, and we'll wait for that to finish
Right, so that failed, looks of it. Um, let's see if we can find out why, and if it's a bad thing or not. Um, for the full version of Oh, so now it says it's best to run a test after the installation, so although we haven't got Kerberos installed, that shouldn't have been a problem. I guess we can um, install it. And see if the tests run any better. Um, so let's run the configure. It's just installing Cracklib. We've already got that. So um, if you haven't done that yourself, then that's probably a good idea to install that. Um, So we need to create a config file. And that would obviously have to be modified. So let's um, edit this. So default realm example.org. So let's just leave it as example.org. And then example.org equals. So this will be the name of the machine. So uh, let's do kernel text PC. Oh, hang on. Insert kernel text PC. Dot example to org. Admin server. Oh, let's check that out. I guess it's something you'd have if you um, had some sort of server providing this you know, functionality. It looks like that's that's it. So no, I've, I've never done this before, so I may have configured this wrong. Let's try creating this database. Um, create a database. Now you should populate data with principal users. We'll now just use your record login name or root. Um, So let's put something in that I won't forget. Okay. So it looks like we type this in. And then we type these commands in.
So I've used my normal user. They suggest to use that or the root. Okay, so I can't use the same password as the name. So let's try something else. No, even capitals it doesn't work. So let's try another one. Okay, so that worked. So I need to change this to the server name. That's created and now run this command again with the server name. Oh, I've added that wrong there. That should be like that. Hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Exit the KD admin use quit or exit. Start the KDC session manually to test it out. That seems to have worked. So let's get a ticket with the following command. Alright, let me become kernel text then. Let's try again. No, it's obviously not working. Oh, let's read this. It says it should create a file in ATC and KRB 5K tab. Let's see if that's there. Yeah, it has. And it's got the right permissions. This is running. Could be five KDC. Uh, not sure what I've done wrong there. Obviously, done something wrong. Like I said, I've never done this before, so uh, it's all too new to me. Um, now this is optional, so whether it actually needs a working one or not, I don't know. Cannot contact any KDC for Realm. It's almost as if this is not running. Let's try running these scripts to boot it. So let's go back, install KRB5. Oh, right, so there's a problem with it still. So it looks like it's missing a file, so I wonder if I should 
just go through this all again. Alright, apart from the fact that I haven't really got a domain. Let's try recreating the database. It looks like it's allowed me to create it. exists. Oh, I can't. Let's try destroy. So now let's recreate it. So that's worked. So let's try this KDE K admin local again. Add policy dict only. Add principle kernel kind of text and he wants a password so let's put the password in password is in the password dictionary alright oh, okay so maybe it's too simple um Okay, so that's a bit better. Now add principle. Example to org. That's worked. seems to have worked. So let's look at the etc krb 5key tab. Oh, I haven't quit the so etc krb 5 tab. Yeah, that's there. In fact, it's a bigger size this time, so I'm not sure whether that's been added or let's create it differently. So let's restart the server and see if it still complains. Right. Oh, no, it's still failing. <coughs> Can I open a such file? So imagine this K and it's not going to work then. No. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I don't know enough about this to get this working properly. So I'm going to have to hope that it's not, all this configuration is not required to get libtrpc installed
I wonder if um, some of these optional packages here are causing the problem. There's a possibility of another optional. Um, let's try this one, KTU Till. Doesn't mean a lot to me. Okay, let's quit this and just try this KNET once more. Zoom for put root in, that's not my principle that won't work, no. I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave that and just hope that it will work as it is. So, um, we've got three of this anyway. With any luck it will work far better then. Downloading this file. Okay, source forge. All right. Okay, we've already got it. This might be a rebuild then. Yes, it is. Let's try this with this GSS API. So we've got the Kerberos installed and build it. And install the package. So that should be done again. Mark that off on my list is rebuilt. And we'll go to GLM now. Uh, 
Let's mark off the TRPC. Extract T uh, G lamp. Okay, so it's just a case of copying some files to install this package. There's the root. It's done. Let's mark that off at section ten GLM complete. Now we can install glue. Installing, uh, downloading rather. That's better. Additional download. Updates and release. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not on that one yet. Install glue by running the follow commands. So there's no other options. No test suites, so we can do make install dot all and that's complete. So we should be able to build this asymptote now. Let's just check if we've already got it. No. Let's download it. Extract it. And start the installation. As I said before, we've got to be careful that we configure with the correct path now. So let's do this very carefully by hand. That should be it. So let's see if there's any other options to change. No, it looks like we just stick with those defaults. So let's run that in and hopefully it will 
configured correctly. No complaints, so let's build it now. Okay, so uh, we can run make check now to test it. And that looks like it's all passed, so we will do make install. And that should complete that. Oh no, it's failed. PDF latex, no file or directory. So this is probably because it hasn't got the um, path, I think. Yeah, so let's do SU minus. Still, that's better. Not sure why I can't find that path, even though it's got the path to that that file. It's um, it's strange that. Okay, that's good. It's built. We can tidy up. 